If you've always wanted to create your own manga and you feel like you've been aimlessly going about it, you feel lost, you feel stuck, and you basically don't know what the heck you're doing, then make sure to stick around until the end because in this video, we're going to teach you the blueprint to create your first one-shot manga. We've spoken to our pro mangaka mentors, Nao Yazawa and Rena Saya. They've both won manga contests, created one-shots, serializations, self-published their own titles, and worked with editors and publishers in Japan. They've also been teaching at manga schools in Tokyo. Together, they have over 50 years of experience making manga. We're going to share their best practices and break down their process to help you create a step-by-step -step plan for your manga. You can divide your manga production process into six main steps. Writing, visual designs, storyboarding, pencil sketches, inking, and finally, your finishing touches. Warning, creating your first one-shot manga will take a lot of effort, time, and commitment. According to Yazawa Sensei, it's going to be 10 times harder and more stressful than just drawing your own characters or simply daydreaming about a story in your head. That's why, if you're serious about finally putting your story on paper and inspiring other people with your message, we invite you to book a consultation call with us and see if you'd be a good fit to be a founding member of our online one-shot manga drawing program. You'll be working with pro mangaka mentors live during Zoom sessions, and you'll be together with a community of aspiring mangakas just like you. Think you have what it takes? You can book a consultation call with us through the link in the description. Before we start, let's just clarify the scope of our manga. If you've been following our channel, you know that the gateway to starting your manga journey is through a one-shot. You can join international manga competitions like Silent Manga Audition or Kyoto International Creators Award by submitting your one-shot. Most publishers will also only commission a one-shot. You get serialized for multiple chapters after reader survey results are in and they actually like your story. So, let's start from there, alright? In case you already created an overly complex story that would need tens, maybe even thousands of chapters just to explain everything, we suggest picking out a certain part of your story to highlight in your one-shot. According to Yazawa Sensei, you can forget about trying to become a pro mangaka if you can't even make a 20-page chapter interesting enough for your readers to enjoy and want more. FYI, Shonen Jump chapters are 20 pages long on average. You really need to know how to tell a good story with limited pages. In this video, let's imagine we're working on a 16-page story. This length is pretty standard if you want to join any manga competition. Now that we've clarified the scope, let's move on to the production process. First is writing. The thing is that before you even write your story, you have to determine your target audience first. If you want to make it as a pro mangaka in the future, you need to learn how to write stories that an audience will enjoy. Not just you and your friends and family. As we mentioned before, in the world of manga, there are five main demographics. Shonen, targeting young boys aged 12 to 18. Shoujo, targeting young girls aged 12 to 18. Seinen, targeting adult men aged 18 and above. Jose, targeting adult women aged 18 and above. And Kodobo Muke, targeting children that are 12 years old and below. Some mangakas want to be featured in specific publications like Shonen Jump or Cheese, which targets women aged 18 to 25. These publications already have a set target audience to begin with. If you want to get featured in these existing titles, your story has to appeal to the same demographic. Once you know your audience, pick a genre or theme for your story. Is it going to be action and adventure, sci-fi, thriller, romance, comedy? Just remember that the plot and tropes will be different depending on the combination of your target audience and genre. For example, Toradora and Lovely Complex are both romance comedies. But one is shonen and the other is shoujo. In a shonen romance manga like Toradora, there's usually a harem aspect around it. 
there's your main lead who's a regular looking guy that's surrounded by all these attractive beautiful women who are somehow in love with him. He gets some screen time and sometimes fan service from all these different ladies but there's always gonna be that one special girl for him. In shoujo romance stories, the female lead is usually a bit average, and then you have the male lead who's handsome and popular. You have a second male lead who's in love with your FL, but eventually gets his heart broken. And then you have a love rival that's a more attractive female character. Whatever the genre you pick, just make sure you do a bit of research on common tropes first. For any story, you have to answer the following questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how? Who is your main character and what's their personality like? What do they want to achieve? When does this happen? The modern 21st century? Years into the future? Where does this happen? In Japan? In America? In a totally fictional world? Why does the MC want to achieve his or her end goal? How is he or she going to make it happen? Try to be as detailed as you can. As you list down your answers, you'll start to get a rough idea of your story. If some visual ideas come to mind, feel free to sketch them out for your own notes and reference. Next, write down your plot. Think of your plot as a written summary of your manga. This is for the eyes of people involved in production. It's for you, your editor, and if you partner with someone, maybe it would be for your illustrator. For a 16-page one-shot, our mentor Rena Sensei said that you should be able to fit your plot into a single page. Maybe two if you go with more details and add in your dialogues as well. To create an exciting story, you need to divide your plot into four parts. In Japanese, it's called Ki Sho Ten Kitsu which in English translates to introduction, development, twist, and conclusion. Since we're working with only 16 pages, you have to divide them up. How many pages do you dedicate to the introduction, to the development, to the twist or climax? List down all your pages and consider what scenes need to be covered and in what order. After you've finished your plot, you can finalize the look of your characters and create character reference sheets. Technically, you can also do this before finalizing your plot. The sequence doesn't really matter too much as long as they both get done. Anyway, for a one-shot with a standalone story of only 16 pages, Yazawa Sensei recommends highlighting a max of two characters. You could do more if you'd like, but it might be challenging to introduce so many people. As we've mentioned before, designing your original character goes beyond just the visuals. We work with a lot of beginners who put too much emphasis on making their characters look good that they don't even flesh out their OC's personality or goals or weaknesses or even their background story. We already have a bunch of other videos on character design, so if you need help designing your OC or you don't know how to create a character reference sheet, we suggest checking out our character design tutorial videos. We'll link them in the comments. FYI, if you're creating a fictional world, you can also create sketches of your setting during this stage of production. These landscape sketches will help you draw the settings more accurately in your manga. It doesn't have to be so complicated, nor does it have to look perfect. The important part is that you understand what it's supposed to look like. If you work with an editor and they review your story, these sketches will also help them visualize and understand your fictional world. In Japanese, your storyboard is called a name. There's a whole art behind it. When you watch a movie, you just sit down, watch, and everything flows naturally, right? It's the same with manga. Your reader's eyes have to smoothly flow across the panels without them even thinking. When they hit the bottom leftmost panel, it should feel super natural for them to continue turning the page. Let's do a quick exercise. Here are two examples from Yazawa Sensei. Which do you think is better in a manga? A or B? You can pause this frame and give it some thought. Are you ready? The correct answer is A. Since manga is traditionally read from right to left, even your character's movement would follow the same direction. If you place B in a manga panel, it would look like the man's face is being sucked into the hose. For A, the events happen in the order of 1, 2, and 3. Were you able to get the right answer? Let us know in the comments! One of the most common pitfalls of beginner mangakas is that they skip 
the storyboarding stage completely. Instead, they just draw one page at a time without proper planning. And what do you get? Lots of headshots and bust shots, same angles, same panel sizes, redundant scenes. The visuals are barely driving the story forward. The readers have to depend so much on the dialogue to actually understand what's going on. That's not good visual storytelling. Imagine being a director of a movie. You want it to be interesting and exciting, right? With different scenes, angles, and visuals. Well, it's the same with manga, and you're the director of your own story. You want to have the thumbnails for all your pages ready during the storyboarding stage. Look at all 16 pages as a whole and see if you have enough variety in your visuals. Do you notice that the heads are all the same size or that the characters are all looking the same direction from the same angle? Do you have panels that actually help establish the setting of your story? Do you have close-up shots, long shots, dynamic poses? Be your own critic and don't be scared to redo your storyboard. According to Yazawa Sensei, your first storyboard draft usually sucks. Mangakas redo their first draft all the time. When they show it to their editor, there's usually even more corrections. You end up with version 3 or 4 at minimum before you can even move on to the pencil sketches. You see, it's gonna be even more painful and time-consuming if you make big changes beyond the storyboarding stage. So if you need to edit, this is the time to do it. When your storyboard is done, you scale that up to larger paper and start with your pencil sketches. Usually, your name is drawn on smaller sizes like A4 or B5. The standard size for the final manuscripts is B4. This is ideal because when you draw scenes with multiple characters or details, you have enough space to execute. If you use a digital program like Clip Studio Paint, you can easily set up the paper size. If you go the traditional route, there are special manga papers that already have printing guidelines. The edges are trimmed off during the printing process, so make sure you stay inside these margins. Once you're done with your sketches, you proceed with inking. You do the line art, the speed lines, and the initial shading. In manga, the process of inking black areas is called beta. You use this to shade dark backgrounds, dark clothes or patterns, and quite commonly, black hair. There are different approaches to it and you can adjust according to your art style and preference. For the whole inking process, you can go the traditional analog route or go purely digital. You might assume that in this day and age, everyone is switching to digital art, but there are still quite a few mangakas who prefer old-school inking, like Yusuke Murata who illustrates One Punch Man and One Piece creator Eiichiro Oda. There might be no Control z but sometimes there's just more uniqueness and personality to your lines when you do them organically. As we've mentioned in our other videos, you don't ink your manga with regular micron pens. Instead, you use dip pens and fude brush pens. If you want to know what kind of art supplies you need and how to use them, we'll link our manga inking tutorials in the description. Make sure to check them out. The last step is adding your screen tones and effects. This final step helps make your artworks pop, it helps you create the right mood and convey the right emotions. Picking the right screen tones and effects takes quite a bit of practice. And your target audience, genre, and story definitely makes an impact on your choices. For example, in emotional shoujo scenes, you see a lot of these light, fluffy, dramatic screen tone effects. But in shonen, you might get something more straightforward, like Luffy ugly crying. No delicate fluffy effects here. Anyway, everything would definitely depend on how you want to convey the scene to your audience. If you want to learn how to shade your manga, we've got a tutorial for that as well. As usual, the link is in the description. Overall, creating your first one-shot manga takes quite a bit of hard work and dedication. If you're serious about making this happen and you want to work with pro mangakas and fellow aspiring mangakas on your journey, then we encourage you to book a call with us and see if we're a good fit to work together. The link is in the description. If you want to try this out by yourself, here's a character design tutorial to get you started. Good luck and we'll see you in our next video.